All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Peter Renna, back with another Top 10 Toys for you this week. I'm going to try out this new Saturday morning time slot for you. Kind of get that Saturday morning cartoon kind of vibe. Just trying to find a nice place to drop uh, these toy videos where, uh, you know, I can maximize where, when you guys actually want to see it. Because, you know, this isn't really a nighttime show. Talk about toys here. So, with that said, we'll try out the Saturday morning thing for a little bit and uh, see how that works out. Um, hopefully, you're checking this out either on my channel or on Tales from the Flip Side, where I'm dropping the the video on to both because uh i think i want to reach as many people as possible with this thing so hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos as i plan to do many more as well the weeks continue to roll on so for this week i'd like to point out that i'm going to be covering uh kenner superpowers you know the dc superheroes these from the early 1980s i think 1983 was the first uh year that these uh dropped just to kind of do something a little bit different I personally am so super excited with Star Wars, with all the, you know, the Disney investor announcements and that included all the Marvel stuff. So many cool things coming down the pipe with Disney Plus. Like, I am super excited about that stuff. But I figured I'd play devil's advocate and let's just take a quick look at DC for a little bit. While everybody's looking left, let's let's go right. So, Kenner Superpowers. I love these toys when I was younger. I had most of the run, at least the first two series. The third series, which was a little bit harder to find and a little bit uh, lesser printed, and you'll see that in some of the prices when we get through into this. But those first two runs, I think I had every one of them. It, they were great. Just excellent molds for the time. Uh, they had, you know, nice little action poses. You could squeeze their legs. They had the little punching, you know, motion or something like did a throwing thing. It, it was very well-made toys for the time, especially when you consider, you know, at the time, you your biggest competition with G.I. Joe. Great. You can see I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the little three and three quarter inches, and they had maximum posability, but they didn't really have any action. And uh, what you had Secret Wars, those guys were, again, nicely molded, but they were all kind of the same, that same kind of lean, lanky look. They all had the same kind of vibe. And when He-Man, the exact opposite, you had the big bulky squat. So, uh, well, unless you want to go back to, like, Mego, but we'll worry about that later. But Kenner Superpowers was a great toy line, again great molds the faces they looked like the characters you had the dc super friends cartoon at the time fantastic fantastic stuff you had you know, vehicles and tons of figures at hall of justice a lot of a lot of fun things some useless things like i don't understand why superman had a, a flying car considered you know dude could fly but hey whatever whatever sells toys right so that said let's uh not go into too much into uh, the, the line as a whole. Let's get right to the list. So, uh, again, I just kind of did averages going over like recent eBay sales over the last three months because that's uh, how far they back, they basically track. And I'm only doing carded figures mostly because I'll mention some of the loose prices because, again, loose is very hard to uh, compare. You can't really go apples to apples with loose because with a lot of these toys, even something as simple as the superpowers, there are things like capes that could be, uh, you know, ruined, wrecked, missing. Uh, it's figures like the arms and legs could be you know, paint can be chipped like there's a lot of condition that goes into things when you talk about loose so you can't really do an apples to apples price even with you know carded figures you still have the you know the the condition of the card but for the by and large the most part most carded figures generally uh they command a premium so those are the prices i'm going with just to give you guys a sense of uh value here so we're going to start off our list with number 10 and it shouldn't be uh, hard to guess who that is and uh number 10 we got batman uh, I love the the gray and blue. The gray and blue was a great look. It, it was a I loved it in the again Super Friends cartoon. Uh, I, granted, the Michael Keaton black suit Batman is awesome. It's iconic, and I currently love more of the, like the gray and the black. But that blue, there's something about that light blue and the gray, it makes me think Batman. It, that's the Batman that I remember as a kid. That's the Batman that I know. And uh, you know that guy, he's number ten, mostly because the average is at one hundred and sixty four fifty with a high sale of about $255. And uh, I think there was 11 of them that I picked up uh, tracking. Loose, he can be pretty cheap because Batman is, you know, he's one of the figureheads of DC. He is an easier to find figure. So the loose ones, you know, you can, you can find them pretty cheap. But for the card figure, that's our, uh, our number 10, which will take us to our number nine. And number nine, I believe, is Superman. Again, other figurehead of the dc if not the most iconic the second most iconic you know depending on what where you know, which which garage you park your car batman superman but superman's right there at uh number nine in this case and he's averaging about 183 dollars or so for those carded figures and he had 18 sales so a little bit more moving for soups and uh there was a high of 382 
I think that high might have been uh, a Canadian price, uh, not Canadian price, a Canadian figure. That's the other thing with some of these DCs. Uh, there are some foreign editions. I'll get into that a little bit more later. But uh, the Canadian price, uh, Canadian price, I keep saying Canadian price because of comics. But the Canadian carded figures, you can tell uh, pretty pretty clearly because they'll have the uh, the French on them. Like they'll basically have English and French because as the, many of the laws go in a lot of parts of Canada, French, you know, French Canadians, you have to have English and French, you know, on both. So you'll see it, you know, right there on the card that they have both the, uh, you know, the English and the French version uh, of like, you know, the titles and all the, you know, all the verbiage that's on the card. So I think that might've been that high sale for that 382, but I'm not positive, but that's a uh, ringing a bell in my head when I'm uh, looking at my prices here. But the other thing you might want to notice about these figures and the prices are kind of the, consistent between the regular carded ones that I'm showing here, as well as there was a small carded or short carded, depending on what you want to call it, where it was like thin. I guess you can fit more on the shelves with this, this tight. It was just, it wasn't a lot of extra card. It was basically just a figure right there. Uh, so this first run, I believe a lot of the figures had this, uh, this small card as well. I, I think from what I gathered, the prices seem about the same. So, uh, you know, pick your poison, which one do you like better? Uh, grab either if you can, obviously carded figures like this aren't easy to come by. So, you know, do what you can, but these small carded figures were another option too, just to kind of point out from this line. And uh, I, well, I guess while we're just kind of going on this little tangent before we really get into the meat of this list, I think one last thing I'd like to point out with these figures is you can kind of see it, I think, behind uh, Soup's there that these, I believe these came with these little mini comics as well, the superpowers, and there was a whole bunch of them. You, you can tell, like, little, I think there's a couple pages, but these little mini comics are kind of cool. Uh, currently, I'm just kind of into these little mini comics for whatever reason right now. I blame Topher for just kind of putting these things in my head. I actually went to my shop today, just sidetracked and bought these little mini Star Wars comics because... They were kind of cool, and again, it's got these stupid things in my head now. But So thanks to Topher for putting that idea in my head. But moving on, mini-comics, superpowers, those are also fun little things you can find. I think He-Man also had a similar little thing, too, uh, with some of theirs. But mini-comics was a popular thing back uh, back in those early 80s with the toy lines, because, you know, it's any another way to sell your toys. Apart from having cartoons to promote what you got, uh, comic books was another way to go. So... With Superman, we're going to move on to number eight, and our number eight is Steppenwolf. Now, if you look at this guy, you can see he looks nothing like what they gave us in that Justice League movie where they just kind of washed him out and made him another big gray mass villain, just, oh, super villain, we'll just make him big and gray and just nondescript. This guy, he, he's, I don't know, he's kind of a cool look. He looks like he's got a Genghis Khan kind of thing going with a, you know, the Road Warrior style, like uh, armor. He, he's pretty cool, and he still has that... Uh, you know, that kind of trademark weapon, that kind of axe, I guess you would say, that he has, that he did have in the Justice League movie. I'm really curious what they're going to do with uh, the Snyder Cut. I'm not going to lie. I'm intrigued. But uh, I don't know. I just wasn't a big fan of the look of Steppenwolf in that movie. It was just too too generic. I don't know. Uh, that was just me. Too generic. Not that I can you know, want him to look like this guy, but this is at least you know, kind of a unique look. Well, Genghis Khan or not. But... Uh, yeah, there it is. So this one came in at uh, number eight, and this was just, it literally just beat out Superman at 183.25, where Soups was, I think, uh, 22 cents. So he's right there, neck and neck with Soups on the average. But there's only two sales that uh, I could find a Steppenwolf in the package, because, again, some of these are kind of harder to find in the package. So Batman, Soups, lots. People held on to them. Makes sense. Steppenwolf, I can't see a lot of people hanging on to their Steppenwolves, like, oh, this is my favorite character ever. But there were two, two sales. And uh, the high of these two, and it's pretty consistent because the high was only 187.50. So, you know, you can see the uh, other one must have been just under 180. I don't have it in front of me, but hey, loose. This is a 40 to 90 dollar figure too, by the way. So just to give you kind of an idea, that's what you can get for a little Steppenwolf if you, uh, you know, if you had them. So we're gonna move on from Steppenwolf and go on to our number seven, who is, come on, seven, come on, Hawkman. Oh. I was a big fan of Hawkman. Uh, this figure was uh, was really cool because he had wings. Like you, 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 you squeeze the legs, wings flapped. Like it, it was cool. Like it, there wasn't a lot of you know flying figures that you could have back then. Uh, you know the wings kind of popped off pretty easily, but you can you know get them right back on there without without too much trouble. And he had that badass mace. And again, you can see the little comic book uh, snuck in behind the figure there. So you had to open it up to get to uh, get to that comic. So uh, Hawkman. Again, hits us at number seven, and he's averaging just under 200 bucks at 198.91, uh, and with a high sale of uh, 244.49, uh, from what I found. Uh, only four Hawkman sales, 
and uh, you can find him loose too. He's a little bit, uh, a little bit, not say easier, but you can find a bunch of these. Here, 40, 50 bucks will get you a loose Hawkman in uh, pretty decent shape. But uh, Hawkman is a really cool figure. Again, I remember playing with that one a lot. It was just, it was fun. Uh, so moving on, number six. Number six, we're going to go to a villain here. And uh, we got Mr. Freeze. Now, I don't actually think... Well, no, I did have this one. Yeah, Mr. Freeze, I do remember this one. A little weird, you know, a little more squat of a figure. And, uh, you know, I had the little purple uh, you know, purple helmet that kind of came off. But Mr. Freeze comes in at our number six spot, and he's averaging 242.33 with a high of uh, 256.99. So, you know, not an easy figure to come by. You got those tubes, you know, going out. Those are kind of things that would come off and you would lose, you know, as a kid, like those little extras were sometimes hard to keep a hold of. So that's why, uh, again, going to the loose, which a loose of uh, Mr. Freeze is going to get you or cost you about 60 to 120, depending on condition. He might be missing the helmet part. He might be missing, like I said, the, the tubes that uh, run, up, run down the side there. So, you know, Mr. Freeze ain't always easy to, uh, to find, uh, you know, these days, but yeah, still was a cool figure. Still was definitely a cool figure, but he was our number six, which will get us into our you know top five. So I'm going to take a quick little pause. Recharge. I'm the only one here talking, so I got to take a breath every now and again to keep this thing moving. But our number five figure on our list is Samurai. Interesting character. I remember him from the cartoon. It has an interesting look, if not the greatest outfit. It's definitely unique with the, the little... It looks almost like a wrestler to me. Like, this is something that you can see, you know, like, you know, a wrestler accompanying Ricky the Dragon Steamboat down the uh, down the big walkway into the ring back in the day. And that little, little kind of like a little lightning sword kind of thing he had was kind of cool. But uh, he had, like, a little spinning action, I believe, with his uh, with his body. Uh, so that was his little, uh, his little fun little thing that he got to do. And... Uh, Samurai, he is, like I said, an interesting character that you, you can find. And he hits number five because he's hitting at about 243.29 as the average. And that's you know, about five sales that uh, that made that up. And this one's got a high of uh, 280.99. Now, Samurai, if you want to find him loose with all his stuff, including like the little garb, it can hit up a high of like 170 bucks or you can go down as low as 60. So, you know, that 50 to $60 range is a lot of like the low end prices for good, you know, for these uh, loose Kenner superpowers guys, but you can see some of these get pretty pricey, even loose. I mean, $170 loose or $243, um, you know, in the package, it's pretty close. It's definitely pretty close. So, I don't know, just something to keep in mind. Like, not all the time. You know, I mean, when you're out there hunting or you're at a flea market or a yard sale, you're not always going to find a carded figure. I mean, if you do, you know, awesome, you know, buy it if you can. But if you find them loose, still, as long as the price is right, you know. I'd still say grab it. So with that said, we're going to move on to number four. And number four, we have Mr. Miracle. Pretty cool. He's got that green cape uh, you know, with the high collar. The other capes that like Supes and Bat Batman had was just kind of like a little snap the one around their neck. This gave you a little extra, you know, get a little extra of that uh, that high collar around his neck. He's got a similar look to uh, like the, the bulkier, you know, superheroes, which it's kind of you know, again, with toys, they always usually use a lot of the same molds. So a lot of them are going to have the same build and that's just going to kind of be reused and repainted. So you're not going to get unique molds like we get these days for everything where you can have like Mr. Miracle has always come off to me as more of a slimmer character, but here he is. He's kind of tough guy, super puffed up, but uh, you know what? Uh, maybe he was hitting the gym. I don't know, but Mr. Miracle is hitting us here with an average of a uh, two sixty one fifty eight, And that's why he's got us in at number four. And, uh, that's the average and 299 is the high. And I got four sales tracked on that one. Again, not a lot, but it is what it is. Uh, loose with all his stuff, you're hitting 60 to up to 200 bucks. So you can still get 200 bucks for a loose Mr. Miracle if you can get him with his cape and all this fun stuff. But, uh, you know, we can do. I think this might have came with uh, the handcuffs there that they're showing. I think they might have been tucked in there behind, uh, behind his cape. I'm not 100% positive. I don't recall. Uh, but I think that might have been one of the accessories. So again, having these accessories really helps the resale if uh, you know if you can find them. Which is also why some of the accessories on their own sell very well. Where you can find like those handcuffs could probably run. I know I haven't looked it up, but you, know, you could probably get like 20, 30 bucks just for the handcuffs because a collector might want that to put with their figure to complete it. So 
that's what you got to keep your eye on. Like uh, some of these things, like just capes, just pieces, people rebuild and kind of refurbish these things uh, with loose parts. So loose parts can definitely still sell well if you know what they are and what you're looking at. So again, just something to keep in mind. Definitely something to keep in mind when you're out there hunting and looking at stuff. So we're going to move on to number three. And number three, we have Captain Marvel. Well, no, they didn't call him Captain Marvel. We got Shazam. Even then, they just went with Shazam. Uh, yeah, because that's what everybody knew him as. And I think they might have lost the rights to the Captain Marvel name to Marvel by that point. But Shazam, pretty cool figure. I actually don't think I had Shazam. I don't remember having Shazam. But yeah, here he is now. And uh, you can see he's got that little white, little short cape. He's got a little short white cape, which uh, this is kind of the look that we got with uh, Zach, Zach Levi. Just in the most recent movie, which was a very good movie, uh, I think. Uh, so you can see it. It doesn't look like they gave him the high collar, though. That was a missed opportunity here. Uh, but maybe it is. It's just tucked in on the figure. Like I said, I didn't have it, so I don't really remember if the, the cape had the high collar when you open this thing up. But Shazam. Shazam is averaging over $300. we are hitting $303.19 with a high of $430.99. And I got five sales uh, on this guy. Loose, loose Shazams. It's 100 to 200 bucks, and the 200 bucks is with the cape. So that means at 100 bucks with a capeless Shazam, you can still, you know, still find 100 bucks for just a loose figure. Craziness. Again, keep an eye out. Those little piles of toys. People don't know what they have. You might. So that's number three. We're getting down to the nitty gritty here. So hitting our number two spot is a character I had no idea who this was, and I did not own this one as a kid. This is Golden Pharaoh. Yeah, didn't really have Golden Pharaoh. Now you can see why he's hitting number two, and he's probably pretty hard to find, especially with all of his stuff. But Golden Pharaoh, four hundred and three dollars uh, for uh, the average on this guy, with a high of uh, four hundred thirty-seven dollars. Three sales on Golden Pharaoh. You can see he's got like these little wing things under under the arms. I, I believe it was almost like a see-through uh, plastic thing on his chest, and he's got that like a uh, that pole uh, speed, not a spear. It's like a I don't know. Whatever. He's got the little accessories there. So, loose. This is a hundred twenty to hundred and fifty dollar figure for Golden Pharaoh. Oddball character. Probably not easy to find again. I had tons of toys as a kid. I don't remember this one. So, I can see him hitting number two. It's just being unique and just being rare. And there was a lot of weird characters uh, that ran through this run, but uh, he must have just been on the tougher end. But Golden Pharaoh was number two, which we will then hold. A quick pause and go to our number one figure on the list. And this is by far the number one figure on the list just by price alone. Ah, did I build enough suspense there taking that drink? But our number one figure is Cyborg. Cyborg gets money. Cyborg gets money, just so you know. 720 bucks for this guy. Asking price, and that was only one sale. Only sale of Cyborg carded, 720 Asking price, I think there's one up right now. They're asking a grand. Asking price on a loose cyborg. Loose and incomplete, $650. So this cyborg is a tough figure to have. Uh, I don't remember having this one. And you can see, especially incomplete, look at the extra hand changes. And the incomplete one I'm talking about doesn't even have the regular hands. It's not like you're missing the extra hands. It didn't even have the regular hands. But extra hands here, you know, the little extra tools, just, you know, cyborg wood. This is the top dog of this list, hitting in again, averaging $720 because that was the only sale. So only sale over three months, 720 bucks. Craziness, craziness. So that's the top 10. That's, that's the list. This is what sells. Now, that isn't really the most expensive figure, but I'm going to mention something soon in our honorable mention section. And I didn't really want to include these in our list because... One, I don't even see. I just hear rumors of them and just mentions of how rare these things are and how high they sell for. But none have sold in the last three months that I could really uh, put numbers around for you. So I didn't really want to cover it or put them very high in the list. That's why these foreign editions are going to hit in the uh, honorable mentions section here. So we're going to start in with the honorable mentions. And the top one that's come off is the Riddler, which is pretty cool. I think this was from Argentina, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you can see this is basically just a repainted Green Lantern figure. They just painted with the Riddler logos. It's pretty cool looking. It, it's pretty awesome, but it's basically just a repaint of uh, Green Lantern. But this bad boy is impossible to find, especially carded. I mean, this is probably a couple thousand dollars. 
So while this would have made top on the list, it's foreign, and I just, again, I didn't really have a lot of good solid data to, to lean on, so I didn't want to put it on the list. So that's why it's hitting honorable mentions. And uh, there's a couple others, too, uh, for the foreign, foreign figures. So outside of the Riddler, there was also this, looks like a repainted Superman, basically. Uh, this is L Captain Ray. So this Captain Ray, which is a figure I think they created just for this line. I forget where this one, uh, this one came from, uh, which country this was released in. But this L Ray was again a unique character that uh, that they used you know, for this series. And it's weird because the mold, while it's very similar, again, like I said, to the Superman, it's starting to look a little bit more like the later series of uh, like Toy Biz, like the, the Toy Biz uh, body types that the. Uh, that a lot of these used for the molds because you'll see it more in the next foreign figure uh, that I got here. And this is the, uh, the abominable snowman, I think is uh, the next one. And this one, this is the body of this and the even outfit. This looks like a Hulk. Like to me, this looks like a loose rough of that first toy biz Hulk where, you know, the rock you know, throwing it. Like that's what this abominable snowman looks like to me, but man, man, who knows? I mean, it could be an early mold for that Hulk. It could just be a unique thing just for this toy line. But the uh, abominable snowman was a, uh, was the last foreign one that uh, I found that the now it's out there, but again, prices are kind of inconsistent. They're all over the place. These things aren't easy to find, especially in package because you know they're not even you know released here in the states. But yeah, there they are. So those foreign ones are definitely you know definitely interesting. But outside of that, I also didn't include vehicles because vehicles again are also pretty tough, especially boxed. A lot of fit, uh, toys and in, uh, in the like the vehicle ranges and the the the, 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 the bases and sets. Uh, those didn't last in the boxes in a lot of uh, cases. So there's lots of loose ones out there, lots of incompletes. But the Batcopter is definitely uh, definitely one that's out there. This is like a little over 200 bucks you know, for this guy, and I've only found loose ones. I haven't even found a for sale or uh, sold Batcopters. I found a picture, but none for sale or none recently sold for the Batcopter. So uh, 200, a little over $200, 250 was like the high on this guy for uh, loose, both loose. And there's only two sales. Uh, and then we also had the Batmobile, which was another one. I remember this, this was a pretty cool uh, pretty cool vehicle to have. It was kind of reminiscent of that old school TV show, Batmobile with the, you know, just the way the the front windshields go and the open top, like in convertible type, but it had that little ramming action in the front. It, this was a very cool toy. Uh, this $213 is the average on the sale prices with a high of about 225. Uh, loose, this is like 60 to 100 bucks still. There's a lot of loose ones for this, but boxed, there are a few, surprisingly, of the Batmobile. I guess they made lots of the Batmobile. Uh, then next, we have, I don't know what the idea was behind this. This had to have been created for another line, maybe a He-Man toy they just repurposed. I don't know, but this Justice Jogger is just silliness. Like, what does Superman need for this thing? And it's how would it be faster? Like, than what, he can't walk? The man can fly. Why is he going to ride in this weird little thing? I don't know. But this weird little power stepping action, I think it kind of walked itself. It's like a big wind-up toy for the most part. But one sale of this thing, boxed, 220 bucks. So 220 bucks for this Justice Jogger. And this is not a big toy. This is a little guy, if you can see. Uh, it just you know, basically Superman sat in it. I mean, that's all it really was. But you can find loose ones for that, about 100 bucks. So if you want a Justice Jogger, there you go. 100 bucks is going to run you. Which will take me to our last and last thing, and then I'll let you guys go because we're hitting 25 minutes almost. Uh, the Hall of Justice, obviously, uh, is one that needs to be mentioned. This is the base. Like, I love the bases from these toy lines. The G.I. Joe bases were the best. But the Hall of Justice was also uh, pretty cool. It kind of opened up. And it was a case, and it had a bunch of little fun stuff in there. This, $343.50 for the uh, average sale price with a high of about $365 for a boxed one. Loose, you could still get about 100 bucks for this thing, and good luck finding a complete one because, again, there's all types of little pieces and little yeah, little things that go inside. Stickers will be ripped and uh, peeling and just browned and sun faded and in a lot of cases. So, yeah, it's hard to find good condition loose uh, vehicles and toys. Figures are easy to wipe down. A figure, you take a Clorox wipe to a lot of figures, you can get a lot of dirt and grime off of just, you know, pretty quickly that way and feel a little bit better about having some used toys. You don't know what happened to it, but the bases and the captain uh, castle gray skulls and the, what have you a lot of nooks and crannies and ain't easy to clean. A lot of these things is dust and dirt has settled into some of those nooks for years, decades even, but uh, that's it. So that's our list. Uh, again, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, Kenner superpowers is a great toy line. Again, uh, 
I love the little action motion and added a nice little uh, little touch to a, a you know to a toy line back then that we didn't see a lot of. Everybody was looking for their shtick from uh, you know Wheeled Warriors and what have you and the uh, Captain Brave Stars and the uh, I don't know tons of toys, tons of things I can get to uh, down the line. Uh, the '80s toys were all about having a gimmick and just running with that gimmick you know all the way through. So again, hopefully you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe to my channel. Like and subscribe. Tales from the flip side. Uh, I'll be back next week with another toy line. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but uh, I might have to go back to Star Wars, but I'll try to keep ease up in the Star Wars. It's just still fresh in my mind. I I'm super excited for the last episode of Mandalorian, so that's why I'm thinking I might go back to Star Wars one more time before taking a good break from it. But we'll see. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Uh, by the time this airs, I will have seen The Mandalorian, and we'll be doing a review show of it here on the Flipside channel on uh, Sunday night. So if you're seeing this video, hang in there. we got a pretty cool... Uh, show coming up for the Mandalorian review. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to see where it's going to leave us. So with that and that little tease aside, again, hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, I will see you guys next time.